My name is Monty Summers. I'm the co-owner of Two Full Cider in Naperville, Illinois. Well, uh, I was home brewing at home and uh, making mostly beer. And then my business partner was making mostly cider and we would get together and we decided we bring product and our, bu our buddies were like, oh, that's great, you guys should start a business. And then we uh, decided to try to do like a, a, a homebrew club and we were looking for space to rent like a warehouse type space. We we're gonna make beer and cider and like put TVs on the wall and make bad food and drink beer. And uh, that really snowballed into, well, maybe we can make a business out of it and maybe we should find a warehouse space the way we can make it to sell it. And we'd end up at a brewery. And when we're at the brewery looking at the pretty tanks and stuff, we were kind of like, well, I want this. So that kind of snowballed really quickly. And next thing you know, six months later after that, we were full on tap room with tanks in the space here. We would end up at Salamoth across the parking lot. And I'm like, I love their tanks. Their tap room's banging, great music. This is fun. That's what I want. And then when this place came available, as soon as I came out that back door, I saw that Salamoth was right there. I'm like, this has got to be it. Because we, we get a lot of, it's very synergistic with them. We get a lot of their business and then some of our clients go over there, so. I imagine some people will. Okay, uh, like, first and foremost, I have two-year-old twins. So those give me up, they get, it's a boy and a girl, they wake up every day at about 6 a.m. So that gets me started. And then uh, by the time I get them off to daycare and stuff, then uh, I start thinking about this place. And I really enjoy growing businesses, taking them from, you know, zero to whatever. So it's fun for me to see how this business has grown through the years. So every day I try to think, you know, what do we need to do to keep growing? What, what new products can we bring in? What new flavors can we come up? Um, it's a lot of fun coming up with a product that people are like ingesting and putting inside their bodies and enjoying, right? It makes them happy. So that's very fulfilling. Well, so cider won over beer when we were doing our club and so what people don't realize is with the TTB, which is the, the branch of the government that controls the licensing, you can have either or. You can have both, but it's more complicated. Um, so we are, since we're made from fruit, we're a winery, and beer is made from a grain. So that's the difference between wine and beer licenses. So we're technically a winery, so we're a winery premises. Sure. When we first opened up, I think we started with like five or six. Um, we, did, we always wanted to do, start off doing like dry English style ciders. Um, so we came up with, a, we, we originally had a dry, we had a tart cherry, we had a hopped, so we had hops. Um, we kind of uh, dry hop it like an IPA beer, um, except you don't get bittering because we don't heat anything up. And then we had uh, a sweet at the time, but it wasn't very sweet. Um, and that actually morphed into rosé funny story the rosé cider is my biggest seller and it was my biggest mistake so one day I had some sweet in the bright tank and I had some blueberry concentrate and I'm like I'm gonna make blueberry cider today so I started adding blueberry to my sweeter cider and was set bringing it around the tap room and saying here try it what do you think and they were like eh, a little bit more blueberry okay add a little more so I bring it back and when it got to where it is now they said stop it's great so I put it on tap and blueberry cider. And on untapped, somebody the very next day was like, great cider, just not very blueberry. Which I agreed, I couldn't really taste. Blueberry's a hard flavor to like come across. So I took it home and I put it in a glass and it was on a, like a white counter. My wife was like, well, it looks kind of like magenta in color, kind of like a rosé wine. So I quickly Googled rosé and it's a color, not a flavor. And uh, we changed the name to Rosé, and it's been our biggest seller ever since. <laughs> so it's a great mistake, right? Right now, our biggest sellers are Rosé, Tart Cherry, and Pine Hopple are my three biggest sellers. And Pine Hopple is my hop cider, and we add pineapple and blood orange to it. And uh, so we call it Pine Hopple. And uh, that actually won a gold medal at Glen Cap a couple years ago. That's my, that's my claim to fame, is getting a gold medal at Glencap, so. Um, 
Those are my biggest sellers, and then we also do some seasonal stuff. Like our, we just did a strawberry lemonade, and that's that's what I'm drinking today, and it's very refreshing and delicious. It's a little sweeter, but it's also sweeter, but it finishes dry with the lemon. It's, it really goes over nice. Yeah, great question. Um, so we started out with a business plan, and we wanted to hit certain numbers first year, which we knocked, we doubled first year at least. Um, and we've grown probably 20, 30% every year. Um, we've pretty much doubled our distribution sales every year. Um, being one of the only cideries helps. And being the local guy, all the local breweries who want to bring on a cider pretty much have taken us on, which has been fantastic. Um, our goal for the future is we're going to go like regional. So we're turning on Michigan distribution in August. So that'll be our first interstate uh, distribution. And then after that, we're hoping to go to Minnesota, Wisconsin, Indiana, Ohio. We, we just probably stay in the Midwest kind of band and kind of go down south, hopefully. That's our, our plan and our goal, our long-term goal. So I want to become the biggest cidery in Illinois and hopefully the biggest Midwest regional cidery. So that's my goal. It's always just more and more and more. So John Barley across the way at Salomo told us one thing of advice. He said, we invest in people and steel. And that's kind of what we've done. We've hired great people to work for us. We've got a great team, um, great cider makers, great taproom workers, great salespeople. Um, and we keep getting more and more equipment to be able to make more cider. So we're at the point today, as we speak, I need more cider tanks so I can get more juice to make to fulfill more of my distribution orders and especially turning on more states I need to make more cider so which is a good problem to have but it's also an expensive problem because you got always got to be buying more equipment so yeah people actually even through covid I mean we uh we pivoted pretty quick and bought the tent early on before we got shut well when they opened us up in the summertime last year for the 3 months we're like they're going to shut us down again so we quickly bought the tents so we could have outdoor space, and um, it saved us. It really did. It did. People were very, very supportive. We did a lot of home deliveries also. Um, we were doing the Naperville area home deliveries, and I live in Oak Park, so I was doing Oak Park deliveries, kind of Oak Park, Forest Park, Berwyn. And between the two territories, people really supported us and really, I mean, shoot, I had people ordering every week, same people, cases at a time drop it off on their stairs. It was great. They were really, really helpful. Our numbers were actually up in 2020 from 2019, believe it or not. COVID. Even with COVID, but it was all packaged because kegs went away. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we're getting out there in the bars and restaurants. Like a lot of the breweries are all bringing in kegs. So they'll put us on tap there. Um, we're like their gluten-free option. So like people that go to breweries that don't like beer can now drink a pint with their buddies, even though it's cider, but they can feel like they're more camaraderie and they can feel better about it, so. Weber was, I met you guys because I wanted to switch from shrink sleeves to labels. And I was having trouble getting a my pack leader machine. And I found out you guys were a distributor for pack leader and called you guys up and my salesman Brian was on top of it and he's like I will help you out he came here for a visit he saw what I was doing what I wanted to do and he jumped on it and really helped us to procure the machine in a quickly manner and then he's like I will get your labels done and they will be perfect and they were so everything was great um, <laughs> so far so good for you guys so you guys have really helped out a lot um, yeah, it's been, it's been a great relationship. Yeah, so we wanted to switch to pressure sensitive labels for a couple reasons. One, we're super package heavy, especially with COVID and all the bars and restaurants shutting down, but retail locations went crazy. So buying shrink sleeve cans is the most expensive package you can possibly buy to make your cider in. Um, so I was paying like 31 and a half cents a can plus a lid plus the pack tech, plus the tray. So for me, it was, it was a cost issue. So I can get a blank, a bright can for way cheaper and then the label for cheaper. 
and it saves me quite a bit of per can. Also, I can control it more, so I can send your art department my label, hey, I wanna release this special release, and I only need 3,000 labels, can you guys do that for me? And then I can move a lot quicker and be able to label it myself. And, you know, I've got already got bright cans sitting in the warehouse, I get the labels and I'm off and running, versus having to wait for the shrink sleeves to be put on the cans and then shipped to me. And just, so it was time and convenience basically for, for us and, and it was uh, cost, cost effective. Saved me about six cents a can, six, six and a half cents a can. So a pallet of 100 cases, that's 600 bucks per pallet. And then if you're sending out you know, 10, 20 pallets a month, that's free rent, <laughs> you know? For doing nothing but getting a, a label machine and switching to labels, so something I'm doing anyway. I'm gonna keep keep making cider and keep packaging it. But if I can do it on my terms and for a cheaper price, it's it's a win-win. Yep, yeah, that's what we did here. That's what we're gonna do. Probably a quarterly seasonal with a fun flavor and do a cool label and um, be harder to do with a shrink sleeve just because you got to go through the whole process and you got to get it all we'll use those again next shrunk and slipped. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's been great.